Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Coming up... <laughs> Deviant Bullets. How do you avoid getting two deer for the price of one? We've got news. We've got hunting YouTube. First, George Digweed is shooting pigeons so far out there's renewed hope his shots may give the Philae probe a shove in the right direction. the words extreme, incredible or awesome because they need to be saved for when things really are excredible or stream or insome. Well today is that day. Hidden somewhere in this maze crop is 23 times world champion shooter George Digweed. Ah there he is, perched on the corner of the standing crop flanked by two pigeon magnets. And that's it, not a single decoy to be seen. He's not waiting for them to come to him, he's taking his pellet party pack to them. Oh, that's a good one. Get on, get on. There's a bit of a wood in front and a belt of trees here. And I've set up right on the corner of the standing maze hoping that the pigeons are going to come up the wood and follow the belt out. It's more flight line shooting than um, decoy. And uh, because it's flight line shooting, it's good practice for this time of year for shooting a few pheasants. There's one coming up through here now, let's hope that comes. But it's very still, so the pigeons aren't really following a pattern. So it'll be an interesting morning, early afternoon shooting. I don't think it'll be particularly easy, uh, but then we don't want it particularly easy. That's how the day is shaping up. So, what has George got in store for us? Well, there is some crow abuse. Andy who? Shot placement. So you're looking at that area there, forward. New shell analysis. And I would feel totally confident using them anywhere. And club digweed. I think that people can see the benefit from it. Let's start with crow banter. And George thinks that Andy can only shoot pigeons 15 feet in front of the hide, producing Hello cases, especially when the slow mo chromo is on. That's what you think about Andy, isn't it, George? Who? Oh, crow. I shouldn't bother to get the slow mo feather cam going, as uh, as I doubt you'll be able to see any feathers come out of the pigeons that we're shooting here. Moving on quickly and high on the North Kent Downs, the conditions are ideal for George to shoot birds at range. A breathless day means the pigeons are flying in straight lines and George is able to get a nice clean swing on them. However, he will only lift the gun if he knows he can see the vitals. Today is an ideal day for killing birds at long range because it's dead still and, you know, they've got... Hang on one second. Now that pigeon was about, the top of that ash tree is about 85 yards. So you'll kill a pigeon or any game bird further if you can see the vital organs. So, you know, I will only shoot at a bird in range, or what I call in range, which is a long way sometimes, if I can see the head or the neck. If you've got a pigeon flying, the vital area is anywhere between here and here and obviously if they're out you may break a wingtip which will get it down on the ground but basically you're looking at that area there forward now if you've got it at range that means it's either coming there or crossing you there you can you can let the shot go into that pigeon so the shot bend back into the pigeon as that's flying lead wise but if you've got a pigeon here, all you're doing is you're coming in here under the vital areas, into the legs and that sort of thing, and, uh, and, and you won't hit a vital spot at range enough to kill it. At 30 yards, you can still put pellets in there and do enough damage to kill it, but at range, you won't do it because it hasn't got the striking energy. Rifle shooters always talk about aiming for the vitals, but how many of us actually think differently about bird shooting? 
stick enough lead in the air and it will drop. Well, George says it won't. It seems appropriate that George is shooting his typical game cartridge, Game Ball's Pigeon Extremes. However, he recently tried something new, even though he hates changing shells. He had a go with Game Ball's new Dark Storm shells on a pheasant day. I took some up to uh, Yorkshire the other day, because I thought being in Yorkshire, if I didn't get on with them particularly well, I was far enough away from home, it wouldn't get back here. And I have to say that I was uh, more than pleasantly surprised at how well the wall wads worked. Um, I was shooting 32 gram fives and not only did they clear all the prick stuff up um, and there were some quite good crosses there at, at good range, that gave me the confidence to go on and then later on in the day we had you know, very good birds presented to us I shot them very well. Please tell me you got that on. So Dark Storm is the Formula E of cartridges, bringing green speed to the shooting field. Talking of which, back to the field and some field craft. George also knows by the bird reaction where the pellet strikes. As you can see, that pigeon was hitting the eye. That wasn't a lung shot tower where they, they go up and hover before they collapse. It was just hit right in the head. Oh! There's that pigeon that we just shot. As if to prove a point. Right in the eye. And yet again, long pigeon, vital spot. George's two labs look absolutely shattered, picking birds up from all corners of Kent. At this time of year they are working every day and they do seem to have lost a bit of speed. The older of the girls, Lara, George classes as one of his best ever dogs. She is suffering from cancer but still finds the energy to retrieve. George picks another long-range bird. At this time of year, when George is not game shooting, he's making time to work on his new membership club, Club Digweed. I believe it's informative. I'm putting a lot into the coaching side of it. And, you know, the feedback we're getting is really good. You know, new ideas. Get on. We've had a few issues with the cameraman. He's a bit dodgy. Um, but after a bit of coaching from me, we've managed to get through a few things uh, and eventually uh, he started to listen. Unfortunately, they have their own ideas and agendas and it's very difficult to, very difficult to sort of try and get people back on board, but we've managed it. That was a nice one. But I'm pleased with the uptake so far. And, uh, and I think that people can see, see the benefit from it. After a quiet morning, the birds start moving at midday and it dries up by 2.30pm. Halfway through the shooting, George starts facing the other way to intercept them coming along the tree line. Just see the top of the maze just starting to move. And for some reason, the pigeons Please are now turning and coming back on. this way. So uh, I've turned round and I'm shooting them on the flight line coming down the belt. There's one coming down the belt here now that should come all the way. Oh, shot underneath him. Killed his mate and shot underneath that one. Oh, what a second barrel. That's the beauty of, of a stiller day shooting, is the fact that if you do hit it hard with your first shot, they, they haven't got the ability, which they have in a wind, They haven't got the ability that they have in a wind of changing direction quick enough. So consequently, I was able to get on the line of that pigeon dropping to be able to kill it. Here, come on. Nelly. Now. Come on. 
It's been a world-class display on. of shooting flighting pigeons at range. The dogs have picked most of the birds, but there's still some tidying up to do. The bag is about 70, which is the average distance in yards that George has shot his birds today. Thank you, George. And if you'd like to see George and Andy who shooting nearly 600 corvids, click on the screen that's appeared up there behind me. Now, before we get to the news, here at Field Sports Channel, we are in the unusual position of being able to run an advertisement. See you at the flicks on Saturday. Here it is. Thank you, Game Boy. Dark Storm. Strangely enough, also the stage name of David, who's up next on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. What's the best way to advertise deer to poachers? Well, the League Against Cruel Sports is paying two watchers to shadow a red stag on the Quantock Hills in Somerset to try and prevent it from being shot. Red deer numbers on the Quantocks have declined since the National Trust banned hunting on land it owns across large parts of the hills. Pulses are racing in the sleepy world of gun auctioneering. This item is going under the hammer at Holtz on Thursday the 11th of December. As this is a family show, we've employed the blobbing machine to spare the blushes. It's a 12 bore by the Belgian gunmaker Frank Cott, made for the American market, with extraordinary engraving by Philippe Griffner. The Mongolian International Eagle Racing Competition has just taken place. Western Mongolia's Kazakh people race golden eagles from the tops of mountains to their owners, who gallop their horses while carrying pieces of meat. Among winners was this 13-year-old girl, Ashol Pan. The Dubai royal family is believed to have taken a lease on a 5 million acre hunting area in Tanzania and they want the locals to leave. The Tanzanian government has ordered 40,000 Maasai tribe people to leave their homeland. The land is around Loliondo, next to the Serengeti National Park and is due to be handed over to a commercial hunting and safari company based in the United Arab Emirates. Antis are infesting the popular computer game Minecraft. In the game, players come across digital farm animals. Anti-hunting group PETA has constructed a pretend headquarters in the pretend world of Minecraft in order to stop people from pretending to kill the imaginary livestock. And finally, staying with video games and United for Wildlife has teamed up with the creators of the Angry Bird video game to try and increase the awareness of poaching. The president of the United for Wildlife charity, Prince William, the Duke of Cambridge, announced an online Angry Birds competition called Roll with the Pangolins that will run from November the 17th to the 23rd. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing, plus back. Thank you, David. Did I spy some special new newsreader specs there? On with the show, it's Hello Charlie. Hello Charlie. Quiet day on the pheasants, so hiding in the maze after the pigeons. All the best. Hello Charlie, it's Paul up here in Dumfries and Galloway again, just at the start of the doe season, and we've started good. There we go. Hello Charlie, this is Nick Rudisol and I'm here for the first day of Indiana's gun season. As you can see, I just knocked over a really great buck with my muzzle loader. You guys have a good one. Bye-bye. That's it. Please send me your Hello Charlies via Facebook, YouTube, Dropbox, or email charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Thank you for those. Please keep them coming. Now, last week's film about Chinese water deer brought up the vexed question of two deer for the price of one. We've been looking into it. Eagle-eyed viewers noticed, as the Chinese water deer in last week's episode fell, another CWD leapt out of the hedge. 
To put the fears of the masses at rest, the first deer had held on this side of the hedge while stalker Paul Childerly had watched its three friends graze through to the other field through his Zeiss binoculars, and nothing escapes them. The one you saw had come back through the hedge at the sound of the gunshot. Of course, you should always make sure the backstop is good and no other animal might intercept a bullet, bullet fragment or even bone as it passes through. It's a serious consideration when culling within a herd, as we have shown in the past. Another reason we head shoot when in this scenario is obviously when the animals are coming through and an animal comes forward, its head is, is normally very clear of the rest of the group. Um, whereas if you were trying to take body shots, it would be incredibly difficult to try and take a body shot without another animal moving in behind it or already behind it. So head shooting does take the shot away from the mass of the herd. Roy does go on to head shoot that animal, but we have age restricted the film. Click on the link on the screen to watch it. Roy is careful about his shots and even he reports once killing a deer with a piece of flying skull from another deer. But accidents do happen. This morning I had two for the price of one. We spotted this uh, female walking uh, in the field, got the rifle up in the sticks, took the shot, and it drops. And I'm quite happy about that, and all of a sudden the stalker goes, ah, ah, it's up again, it's up again. And getting up, scope up, and then I see it's not a female, it's actually a male. And it's walking around, a little punch drunk, and... Of course, I do the only thing yeah, you do, you take the shot and shoot it. Um, and afterwards I thought, ah, well, I was very sure it was a female, but probably my lack of skills. And, uh, and then we walk up there and then what happened was, the first bullet went through this one, and then the ricochet hit a deer behind that we never saw. Well, it was wounded, so of course, we take the shot. So the whole thing uh, worked out nicely. and. Um, I got a very, very beautiful uh, trophy uh, and it's a very good example that always check your surroundings even when you're happy about your shot. You will have views. Has it happened to you and what do you think? Please comment, tweet or Facebook us and let us know. Oh, there will be emails. Next, let's go to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube. It is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Let's start with the film everyone's talking about, Human Technology, a film by Beretta. Well, a film paid for by Beretta. His lovely showing with dancing robots and sweating craftsmen gun making as the engineering art form it truly is. Next up, Michael Hurtado sends in Jason Selmers' latest. Jason runs the Australian Hunting Podcast. In this film, he is after duck on the rice thanks to the new loosened restrictions in New South Wales. 260 Rips is foxing on a golf course using Fox Pro and 223 with Pulsar N750 Night Vision. This is one of the big hitters in the week's hunting and shooting oeuvre on YouTube. It is a Kodiak bear hunt in Alaska and the bear charges. The other popular film this week is Duck and Goose Hunting in Alberta, Canada. It's a promo for Northern Prairie Outfitters which offers waterfowl including mallards, pintails, snow geese, white fronts and the various species of Canada geese. Staying in the frozen north, here are the continuing East Kootenay hunting adventures out in British Columbia with an avid hunter. That's his name. Now bow hunting Todd Bound records himself shooting a white-tailed deer with a compound bow in the Shawnee National Forest in Illinois, USA. And finally, Chassel B is bow hunting in Belarus. He is after big boar and gets fabulously close to the animals. Love it or hate it, televisually that is the magic of bow hunting. That's it for this week. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, we are, of course, back next week. Please subscribe. Please go to our webpage, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can click to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter or pop your email address into our constant contact box and we'll constantly contact you about Field Sports Britain, which is at 7pm UK time every Wednesday. This has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye.